Right, here we are on a what should seem on paper a fairly simple target. Obviously, we're still up on the, the roof. Uh, what are we talking about, 15 yards? Yeah, it's a 15-yarder, and like you said, on paper, you know, you spell it out, okay, it's a 15-yarder, you got a nice flat spot to stand on top of this roof. Should be a piece of cake, right? Still a big target, yeah, 35. They, and you edge yourself off to the end, and you see where it is down there, 35 centimeters, but it's got some pretty good angle on it. But uh, from being an experienced feed -a field shooter, I'm really happy this isn't the bunny target. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they are. They are a lottery. Yeah, for sure. So, go through us and, and... Well, first thing is always, like I said, I'm going to check the range, even at 15 yards, just because it's part of my yes. part of my, uh, my, my pre-shot routine. I'm going to range it, and I'm going to angle it. And that, for the top row, from where I'm standing, is 48 degrees. It's a lot. It's incredibly steep. I mean, you're talking like 50% of the cut, basically. I mean, the cut chart runs out at 45 degrees. Which is, well, it's 30%. Yes. On a target this close, if you're a feet of field shooter, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you're an IFA or NFA shooter, you probably won't know what I'm about to say. But for targets like this, most all feet of field shooters have what's called a birdie mark. Yes. It's a go-to mark. On the close ones, the 10 and 15 yard, 15 meter, you just crank your sight up to that mark and you start there. Yep. For me, I go to my 15 or my 10, whatever it happens to be, this one's 15, and on my Sherlock, I'll come up two and a half full turns. Right. And that's where I'll start with the first one. And it's usually, like I said, feet of field, the dot's half the size of this. You're yep. just hoping to clip a piece of the five, and then you work on maybe trying to get a six out of it. So mm -hmm. come up to 15, I'll just watch my scale on the top, come up one, two, and a half. It takes a lot of guts to, you know, it's just experience, but there's a lot of guys who wouldn't have the guts to wind it up that far. Yeah, well, it's a, a few hours spent on top of my garage every every spring refreshing myself, so. And, um... Not necessarily one for people with vertigo. Can you see the body posture, etc., that's required in this? And it... Will daunt a few. So we've come down through the, the, the factory, and it's only when you stand down here you get an idea of exactly how steep. Not bad shooting for you. Yeah, it's a little more comfortable feeling standing up down here and looking up there than it was up there from the lip. But like I said before, it was a 48 degrees was the angle. And uh, that's beyond anything on the uh, cosine on here. It's, yeah. You're looking at upwards of... 30 to 35 percent of the cut and like i said i go to my standby my birdie mark years of experience and practice come up two and a half turns for my 15 and you know first one's in there bottom of the x second one in there right there bottom of the x on these i almost don't mind being a little bit low maybe yes. on my first shot because you can always anticipate if you don't give it enough or take enough off it you're surely going to be high yes so try to shoot a good low x or a good low spot but I think, I mean, to work with. you've made it look relatively easy, and I would expect you to do so, but I think some people will struggle with this. Well, I think you'll see some high holes. You're going you're gonna to see a lot of people struggle with this, mainly just because of the form. Um, yeah. You know, one of the things I think definitely made that shot a little more comfortable was different bow I'm shooting. 35 yeah. inches axle axle, way outside my normal comfort zone. But I just wanted to put it together and shoot it, you know, and try to convince people and, and test it for myself that, you know, a lot of the technology that do we develop on the tournament line, on the scene, yes. you know, that, that technology that is used to win gold medals and break world records does go directly into our hunting product. And the best way to demonstrate that is to come out here with a top of the line hunting bow and shoot arrows and dot like that on angles like that. But it must be a, a slightly disquieting experience for you to shoot something that short axle to axle. It's not so much the shortness. I've kind of worked with that by kind of maybe rolling my anchor up a little bit higher to try to keep my head position as straight as I can. But the biggest difference is the holding weight reduction. I'm going from normally holding about 18 and a half pounds yep. under hysteresis to holding 13 and a half pounds under hysteresis. That's you know not including the weight that I may Lean load up it. into it yeah. when I come into the shop, but on the scale anyway. Five pound reduction in holding weight, it's mind boggling. Yeah. Um, the biggest thing you notice is probably drawing the bow back on some of those shots. It's a little, you yeah. know, because I'm just used to so much more and then actually having to let one down it's a really odd feeling. Does it hold reasonably still? I mean, there's a lot of rubbish talked about short axle to axles or light let offs that they don't hold still. But well, I think that's often that people shoot them at too long a draw length and all uh, the rest of it. Yeah, I think definitely you're right there, Alistair. There's definitely more things that are attributing to that than the design of the yeah. bow. Bottom line is, I mean, all those bows will hold, be them long or be them short, be them, you know, large brace height or small brace height. I think what 
uh, having that bow with such light mass weight has allowed me to do is experiment with stabilizer setups yeah. that I never would have comprehended on my other bow, my Ultra Elite being, you know, considerably heavier handle, longer, yep. heavier limbs. So I was able to weight that bow and, and distribute the weight a lot differently than I would on my normal setup. So it's kind of given me the freedom to, to play with the stabilization a little bit. Yeah, and, you know, they used to be called old men's bows and you're getting on a little bit, the bigger layoffs, etc. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs>